Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Suraj Jaiswal and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk, talk about solvers in Simscape multibody. But before we talk about that, if you have not followed my previous tutorials, I will highly suggest you to uh, probably go to my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you search Dr. Suraj Jaiswal on YouTube, uh, you can go to my channel and then from the playlist you can watch either all the videos in the playlist of simulation of a mechatronic machine with MATLAB 2023 version or if you want to follow the old videos uh, with probably MATLAB 2019 version so you can go to the simulation of a mechatronic machine I will put MATLAB 2019 in this one okay so if you have followed that tutorials already, then maybe this tutorial is for you. And if you have not followed those tutorials, but you already have some knowledge about Simscape multibody, then also this tutorial is for you. So quickly, I have made a simple pendulum for you uh, using, uh, using the standard uh, component blocks. And then of course, using a brick solid body and a revolute joint and then also using ps simulink converter and scope i'm trying to plot that data and then i have also logged the signal so that i can compare data for different uh, runs simulation runs that i will conduct so quickly if i just try to simulate the system for 10 seconds using the default solver settings then what happens you can see first the animation itself so if you see the animation, you realize that from the beginning, of course, the pendulum is in the horizontal direction and the global coordinate system is here. And the moment it simulates, it's, it falls under gravity, correct? So you see the animation, it works fine for, for us. It's just a simple pendulum. But if you noticed carefully, the animation is maybe not that smooth. If you don't trust me, it's okay because maybe I'm seeing this animation over and over again. So maybe I'm experienced with it. How about we see the plots? So if we see the position plot using this scope, so the position of the revolute joint, we can see that it follows a to and fro motion. So it follows a to and fro rotating motion. But if you see carefully, there are peaks in this plot. So this indicates that the motion is not that smooth. Now, why does that happen? Okay, that happens because, okay, let's go to the solver setting first. So you can go to the solver setting, you either using uh, this or uh, clicking this auto OD45 and then uh, using this view solver setting or from modeling and then model setting. It will lead you to the same place. Now under solver, you can see there is start time, stop time. So we are simulating it for 10 seconds, well and good. But then there is a solver selection where we can say what type of solver is, it, is this and what method that they use. So whenever we talk about solver, remember that we are talking about some kind of an integrator, which is trying to integrate data from the acceleration level to the velocity level to the position level. And of course, if you click this, you can see there are different methods. Uh, so OD45, OD23, ordinary differential equation 45, 2313. All of them have their own accuracy and they, they have their own, own uh, uh, efficiency, correct? So you can play around with them and figure out for yourself which method works fine for you. But in our case, we will keep that as a default. Even in your case, you can keep it as a default solver. But if you know your system is really stiff, for example, if you have high frequency system with, with hydraulic uh, stiffness, if the stiffness is because of hydraulic actuators and so on and so forth, you can all, there is already some suggestions here. So OD 15S, OD 23S, you can select any one of them, right? But we'll keep it the default. Now under variable time step, what does this variable time step mean? It means that I am telling my solver that, hey, starting from time t equals to zero, solve my system here and then under and try to solve in the next time step. Since the time step is variable, 
so i don't know what it is it can be anything right so it can be after 1 millisecond or after 10 millisecond or after 20 millisecond for that reason when you see this plot here you realize that for example once the solver your integrator is trying to solve here then here then here then here that's why you see these peaks if you check carefully you see these peaks so the data in between is lost because the, the, your solver is not solving it at the first place so how can we fix it there are two ways of fixing it okay in the variable time step either you can define the maximum time step to be some value let's say you put it 0 0.001 millisecond uh, one second so it becomes one millisecond remember the unit over here is in seconds okay so 0 0.001 second and then you will see that you have a smooth solution or you can change the variable uh, step to fixed step and then you can select the fixed step to be 0 0.001 this means one millisecond and apply and now let's see now try to go to simulation and simulate your system let's see the behavior first we will see the animation so if we see the animation i feel the animation is smooth i think so but maybe i have been seeing this and trying hit and trial a lot so maybe uh, what i can see you cannot see so don't trust me it's okay trust the plots so if we go to the plot you see now it's so much smooth it's it's like a perfect sinusoidal curve correct now if you want to compare this with respect to the previous one so in the so this is the current run okay and uh, this is the previous run let's change the plot color to be something else and the type to be something else too so if you see carefully zoom in you see this this particular plot uh, let me this particular graph was the one when it was a variable time step and obviously it was solving here then here then here then some point here so the, all the solution in between was getting lost and you could see no solution correct the moment we fix the time step we made the time step to be this small that after every one millisecond we are tr we are asking uh, your uh, our solver to solve the system so what happens at three seconds it's solving at 3.001 uh, 3 3.002 3.003 3.004 and so forth it's solving of course when it's providing you so many solution it's coming at a cost of computational efficiency but then you can see yourself that how you are getting a very very accurate solution correct and that's the power of the the solver setting so if you have solved if you have uh, put uh, put the solver setting to something weird if you just change this to uh, like half second or one second you will see very weird animation which will make no sense so as a summary Try to make your solver such that it's able to solve your system accurately, but at the same time, efficiently, computationally efficient. So as an engineer, it's your responsibility to see which solver uh, method will, will fit for your, is, is accurate or valuable, uh, uh, relevant for your uh, case example, and then what kind of solver type you want to use. In my case, if you are just dealing with multi-body system dynamics, just mechanical system, just try to use fixed step and you can select the time step to be uh, 0 0.001 or 0 0.01. In both case, it will do the job. Let's see how's the result actually for 0 0.01. I try to simulate again. And now also the, the plot is smooth enough, but with little bit 
yeah even in this case it's smooth enough and if you want to compare it uh, with respect to the previous run the difference will be very minimal I, I believe so this is the present run you see this difference is very minimal between the present run. yeah but the moment you zoom in you can figure out the differences right or else not so as an engineer it's your responsibility to choose which method and uh, what time step would work for you so i hope you understood what I'm, i was trying to say here so time step meaning at after every fixed interval if you put it a fixed time step it try, tries to give you the solution while in motion and if you put it variable time step then it will give you solution at after random time steps and then accordingly you will see your plot and the animation so that's all from my end but if you have any question please feel free to post it in the comment section of this video and i will try to answer you as soon as possible thank you so much and please like share and subscribe this video and thank you watch thank you for watching this video see you